Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here from the Retro Future. It's been quite some time since I've ordered a modern console in need of some love and care and attention and repair. Oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, today I've got a new 3DS XL, which I picked up for around 30 pounds. Roll the intro. So before we take a look at this, I haven't opened it yet. Uh, let's have a quick look at the listing. So as you can see right here, it was $32 and $9.99 shipping, which is around 30 pounds and obviously $40. So here are the pictures. Um, there's none that show it working. <laughs> um, and then there's one photo that shows some real deformation and, and damage to the screen. So, and also to the back as well. It's almost like it's actually bent. There's no information on um, the auction about you know what the damage actually is caused by. These companies don't usually know this sort of stuff. They just buy loads of faulty bits and then sell it saying that it's faulty. They'll do very limited testing. Sometimes it's really simple faults, like the batteries just needed a little move around inside. But I imagine this one is gonna be quite a little bit worse off than some of the other things we've found before. So here we go. There it is. So this was picked up from Japan for you, which I honestly haven't bought anything from in a while. Um, but I'm really excited to get back to this because um, all of the things that I've repaired in the past, I still have and use. My most popular video is repairing a 3DS XL, the smaller version, and I still use that. It still works absolutely fine. I bought it for four pounds. Um, so here we go, okay. So overall, initially, the condition of it doesn't seem to be too bad, okay? Now I use that word lightly. What I'm talking about is the actual overall scratches. You can see there's a load of smudges on there and stuff like that. Um, I imagine we're gonna need to order um, more parts. So I'm gonna be filming this video today. Ooh. Hang on. I've just tried to power it on and the light is staying on. Okay, we're just gonna leave that to do its thing and power on, but the inside condition of it is actually not that bad. Um, the screen up here is definitely damaged. It's definitely smashed. You can see something's going on there. The screen down here is cracked. I think this looks like it's been like driven over or, or something, um, but yeah, I mean, it's actually not in too bad condition. There's something going on down in this corner, like the paint's rubbed off or something. The whole thing is bent out of shape. You can see the hinges popping out here and this is bending down. Um, but the, the power button is, is, the power indicator is still staying on. Right, I think what we need to do is take it all apart. We can take a look at the motherboard and see if it's snapped. If it's snapped in half, the whole thing's a write-off because the motherboards are more expensive than this. Um, if the motherboard is still fine and we just need to buy some new screens and a new shell, which will be the best case scenario, then thumbs up. But uh, yeah, let's get started.
Okay, so there we go. I have never taken apart a 3DS XL before and I did that without any sort of tutorial trying to help me how to do it. I basically just was unscrewing things and unplugging things blindly and I managed to take it apart. It's not too difficult, I'm not an expert. So there are two things, three things that are definitely broken and one thing that I'm not 100% sure about uh, but fairly convinced it's also broken. So here they are. So the two things uh, you can clearly see in front of you is the bottom shell piece and the, um, p the digitizer, I believe this is called. Um, the digitizer is adhered inside to this shell piece, as you can see, and it's obviously been cracked. Uh, this is the touch screen part uh, that is obviously being cracked. You can see a big split there through the middle. It's not glass as far as I'm aware. It's um, so, well, actually, no, this is definitely glass. I'm gonna put that down. So that needs to be replaced. I'm not sure if, uh, if it comes with this whole black plastic piece um, as well. I'm gonna have to look on eBay and find out and maybe remove that from, from here if, um, if it doesn't come with a replacement one of those. But anyway, I definitely need a new one of those. I definitely need a new one of these. Uh, this is the only part of the shell that's actually broken. Yes, there is other parts that are damaged and definitely dirty. Uh, obviously the paint on this bottom piece has come off quite badly. But you know what, I wouldn't be too fussed to replace the whole thing for the sake of that. The, the top piece seems fine. I didn't really know how to take the top piece off. Um, I'm pretty certain I took it off the right way, but it did seem to like crack a bit when I was doing it. Maybe you meant to slide it off. Um, I'm not sure, but anyway, I think this will still be fine. And the bottom piece is absolutely fine as well. They need a clean, they're a little bit wet, but I don't think that water got anywhere further than uh, where it was or whatever liquid that is. But yeah, these parts are all fine. I don't have any reason to replace those. So I'm hoping I can find a replacement one of these, uh, just this bottom piece. This top screen, very obviously broken. You can see there the uh, the leak of the, uh, the liquid crystal underneath, very clearly broken. Not sure how much a replacement one of these is yet. Now I'm not sure if this is broken or not, okay? And if this is a really expensive part to replace, I'm not gonna buy one. If it's like 30 pounds, I'm not gonna buy one. I'll just order the top screen and this piece. And then when we plug it all in, I'll see if this is also then broken. And if it is, I'll order another one. The only reason I have to believe that it is broken is the fact that you might be able to see it's bent. Can you see that there? There's like a, a bend going down the middle of it. So moving all of that to the side, the most expensive part in the Nintendo DS in general is the motherboard. So here is that motherboard. It's still got the uh, little micro SD card thing attached to it. I don't actually know if that comes off or not. Um, but anyway, now this is a bit bent. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit bent. Nowhere near as bad as the screen, but it is still bent. Now that's not a good thing because there are a lot of very, very small traces on the motherboard um, and also they're in multiple different layers. So even if I can't see any traces that are damaged on the top, which I can't, there may be some more that are damaged internally. So that is a bit of a problem because I might spend another 40 pounds on this and all the other replacement parts and then this motherboard is broken. So that would be bad. But besides that, there's no liquid damage. I can't see any damage to it at all, any traces that are, that are cut or damaged or any oxidization, any liquid damage. I lifted up those two little metal shields. They looked fine as well underneath. So I don't have any reason to believe that this is actually faulty. There is, however, one small thing. There is some pen all over the motherboard with markings on it. Why? Why is that markings, why are there markings? I don't know what they mean. It just says C, A, B, A, 3, C, 2, I, A, 1. I, I don't know what any of that means. It's definitely been put on there by hand. So that's bad because if, you know, someone's had a look at this, which did look like there was, there was some screws missing, potentially this is actually damaged. So I, I don't know yet. I, I really don't know. We're not gonna know until we order replacement screens. As for the rest of the parts, those of you who have OCD will be very satisfied to know that I have segregated all of the different parts into little bags. So we've got the motherboard screws, the shell screws, this is the camera, 
We've got the D-pad part and the screws in there. We've got the uh, little nub joystick part and all the screws in there. Uh, we've got the battery and the micro SD card. Uh, this is the action button side of the motherboard, which seems to also look absolutely fine, and all of the corresponding screws. Uh, this is the screws for the top shell piece. Obviously, we've got that NFC Amiibo reader. These are some miscellaneous parts like uh, a power switch slider, the light indicator, and the hinge metal tube. Uh, we've got the antenna. We've got the joystick, the the uh, actual analog stick cap, as well as the analog stick and the screws, uh, the cartridge reader, as well as the screws, um, all of the ribbon cable gubbins for the speaker and then to connect the 3D slider and all of the other stuff, and then the home button and the microphone. And that is that. So I'm gonna go ahead and order the respective parts that I feel I need to replace, and we're gonna get it all down and install it. For you, that's gonna take two seconds. For me, it will be a week. Goodbye. Is it over yet? That was absolutely awful. The 3DS as a jet, hang on. Here is the uh, four pound 3DS. Now, I don't know if you watched this video, I'll put it in the card. Um, this was disgusting to, uh, to try and figure out. There's like three different ribbon cables that have to be folded through the hinge. You've got one for the camera, uh, one for the speakers and the 3D slider, and then one for the actual top screen itself. So you have to roll it all up and I put some Kapton tape around those ribbons to hold them together and then feed them through a hole that no ribbon cable should be fed through. And uh, once you've done that, you then have to put a million screws in, in a million different places. There are a million different sizes. There's a million different ribbon cables. As I said in the earlier clip, they sent me the wrong screens. So the bottom screen that I ordered turned out to be a top screen for a to th actually this, it turned out to be a top screen for this. So it's handy to have, but it was 15 quid and it took over a week to arrive. And then the top screen that did actually come for this was broken. One of the little pads was missing on the ribbon cable and that happened to be the pad that dealt with the 3D. So whenever you now turn on the 3D, it does work, but the image doesn't display properly. So I can't see the actual 3D image. So it would work as a replacement uh, whilst you were waiting for your new one to arrive. but. It's a little bit annoying and I'm not gonna be ordering another one right now with all of this going on because it takes weeks for things to arrive. The other thing, 
that didn't even arrive at all, despite the fact that it said that it is arrived, was the um, digitizer. I don't know if someone stole the digitizer off my doorstep or something, but that is nowhere to be seen. So what I did, you may notice I've got a fully working looking 3DS here, um, was I took the motherboard out of this Japanese $30, 30 pound um, new 3DS and I put it into this working DS. So now we've got the motherboard of the Japanese um, 3DS. I also put the back shell on as well so that it says uh, 3DS LL just so that we can know that this is the one that um, was from Japan. So this has now got the Japanese motherboard in it. Now you're probably wondering what's happened to the shell and all of the other gubbins from the original um, from, from the Japanese one and that is right here. So you can see this is the original one that we ordered the 30 pound um, new 3DS XL, although it has got my absolutely fine uh, British PAL um, motherboard inside it. And let me just show you what happened. So please ignore the fact that this screen didn't come with any adhesive to put the screen lens back on. Um, I would be able to sort that out if there was any point, but I'm going to have to order another screen anyway. And also the fact that the, uh, the ignore the fact that the whole digitizer is missing for the bottom. But let me just show you the, uh, the actual screen on the bottom does actually work. There you go, if I open an application, you can see that the, uh, the screen has a load of defects on it. So I would actually have had to have ordered uh, a new screen anyway. So the other thing I haven't ordered either is the replacement bottom shell piece. It does actually hold together perfectly fine because the motherboard um, all screws together and holds it all in fine. I would order a replacement one from China, which seems to be the only place that sells them, but it would take like a month for it to arrive with everything going on with um, the pandemic in the world. So as you can see, things do work. The top screen replacement does work. However, when you slide that 3D up, um, the 3D just doesn't display properly. But the idea is of sh the idea of is of showing you all of this is the fact that the only thing that turned out to be damaged was really the top screen and the digitizer and the bottom screen would have needed replacing anyway just because of the fact that it's obviously sustained some sort of a, an impact and now it's got graphical glitches on the screen uh, where the pixels have leaked. So that is helpful um, to conclude the story. Also this uh, top piece, if I show you, <sighs> give it a nice little breath on there. <laughs> Nature's Mr. Sheen. <sighs> Okay, so I would obviously finish up with a bit of Mr. Sheen, but yeah, look at that. It looks absolutely perfect. So nice and shiny that my camera can't even focus on it. And uh, everything works besides that. If you open up the, the camera, let's wait for that to appear. I'll be able to see it really, there we go. So the camera works fine if I, oh, I can't go to the inner camera because, yeah, I can't show you the inner camera because I can't press that button. So everything works besides the screens, which is a nice thing to conclude. And as for the motherboard, here is the motherboard in the working DS with all of the absolutely perfectly fine components and shell pieces. Wait for it. Boom, look at that. So everything is obviously in Japanese, but that's not a problem. I can just reset it and change the language to uh, English. I'd need to reset this anyway, because obviously it's got another guy's uh, person saving data on here and everything like that. But quite interestingly, it has come with a uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Ruby, I think it is. Um, and then the blue one is Sapphire. Um, I've got my game Pokemon Moon in here, which works absolutely fine. So game cartridges uh, read perfectly well. This has got the game cartridge reader from the Japanese DS in it. I understand this is gonna get very confusing. All you need to know is that the only things that were faulty were the screens, the digitizer, and the fact that the bottom shell was cracked. So that's really nice. And also quite cool is there's a bunch of uh, like retro games for the, uh, the DS emulator in here as well, which is quite nice. So before I do uh, reset this, I'm gonna have a bit of a play with all of, wow, is that the full monster, monster Hunter? There's no way that's the full thing. But anyway, um, I'll reset this and all will work fine. But yeah, look at that, what a wild journey that was. I understand this probably isn't the absolute conclusion you all wanted. You probably wanted to see the final one that I started with fully working absolutely fine. You're technically getting that because it does work absolutely fine. I'm just not waiting for more screens to arrive and then potentially they'll be the wrong part again. But look at this, the Pokemon Ruby save is on here, has 413 hours put into it. 
The total spend came to £60, which is half the price if you were to walk into a shop and buy a working one. So, pretty good outcome. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, leave a like and leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts were and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.